Brooke Chavez here with Star Watch Media, and we're at the premiere of the film For the Love of Money at the Writers Guild of America Theater right here in Beverly Hills. Well, thank you for taking time out to speak with us. Yeah, you're welcome. Tell me, first of all, about your... I'm wearing my girdle. No, go ahead. Let's see. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if, have you seen the film? I'm curious. No, I haven't. I haven't. So you'll I, be seeing it for the first time yeah. tonight. I, I've worked with a lot of the guys that are in it and, uh, you know, being in this business for years. Uh, it's a six degrees of separation, so I'm always out there trying to, you know, um, cheer the guys on, so to speak, you know, and, and I hope, I'm sure it's a good film. Very good film, so we'll see. Absolutely, True and story too. and you got I know, and you have to come out and support your buddies. Yeah, um, were a lot of people did a lot of people go out and support you when the artist oh, premiered? Yeah, yeah we, we, oh, that was just, that was so much fun. Tell us more about uh, that I mean, experience. Like say, what, excuse me, what's your first name? Brooke. Brooke. Say, Brooke, you're gonna do a movie, and you're gonna I say, oh, by the way, it's silent. What? Hey, come on. No, it's a silent. Movie. So we we were uh, curious to say the least, and. Uh, but the, the, the caliber of people that worked in it, you know, from the French side and the American side, was just so uh, experienced and talented. Uh, I mean, uh, Michel Hazinovicius, he, he wrote it, he directed it. And then the, the two stars uh, are booming stars in, in, in France now. But it was good for the film because nobody really knew who they were. So you get swept right in with their, you know, their storyline. And that was great. And uh, all the other good uh, actors that were in it, and uh, Uggy the dog, you know, and James Cromwell and John Goodman. I just worked with John. We did uh, Trouble with the Curve with Clint Eastwood, so we just finished that. So yes, we want to know about that project too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but you know, we just were having a good time, and it was it was interesting to do the scene and have music played, you know, while you're doing the scene, and you're in these great clothes of the 19. You know, what was toughest about not being able to speak, I guess? No, it was nothing was tough. Nothing was tough. It was just really a joy to, to work with it. And it, it came out in the film because when the people leave the, th leave the theater, they, were, they said, we've just been entertained. That was fun. Nobody got shot in the eye and uh, fell off a roof and no special effect. It was a real story about real people set in Hollywood, filmed in Hollywood, which is now the anniversary of the uh, founding of Hollywood, which it was. And also the anniversary of the French presenting us with the Statue of Liberty. It all happened that year, 100 years ago. Yeah. So it was, you know. So it was kind it, of a breath, breath of fresh air to be able to just see raw talent like that. Oh, it, and it's a great uh, movie to take a, a date with or your husband or wife, well, you know. And it just sit, uh, even the kids, they didn't enjoy it. It's, it's PG 13, but you know. And uh, it was fun. So then I went on to the talent with the curve with Clint Eastwood. And that's going to come out September 28th baseball movie and uh who do you play in this movie i play a, a, a scout it's about a baseball scout and clint's a scout and i'm a scout and a couple other guys are scouts and uh amy adams is playing his wife is uh excuse me his daughter and john goodman is a buddy of his and justin timberlake is in there so we got a lot of bases covered there yeah. and uh again it's 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 just a wholesome uh, wholesome is not the word it's a it's a good film it's entertaining again, without music. And do you know a lot, a lot about baseball? Do I? No, hi, hi, they are fly ball left field. I know a lot about baseball. You do? Why is that? Well, I grew up uh, right in the middle of in New York City, where we had three great teams right in their in their heydays. We had the Giants, the Yankees, and the Dodgers all playing in our town. So we had a, we lived and uh, slept and played and loved baseball. So I followed it all the time. Who's your team, favorite team now? Oh, it's, it, it's, well, now, now it's always been the Yankees. Yeah, it's always been. So I'm uh, going, going down there to see them uh, in a while. But uh, anyway, it was uh, it was nice to do a baseball movie and grow up where I grew up. I see my mom was an actress on Broadway, so she taught me a lot of stuff and uh, she worked with a lot of famous people. And my cousin is Elaine, Elaine Stritch. You know her? She just did a, one of Tony uh, a few years back. She's 87. She's still knocking them dead. She has the one-woman show. She just, just played here at the Walt Disney Concert Hall. Sold out. Wow, we're going to have to check that out. Yeah, yeah. 
So something to aspire to, huh? Yeah, and she's a, she's a, a bundle of talent, and uh, everybody is. She's like a legend, a Broadway legend, and um, uh, people throw it around, but she really is. People love love to see her come out. So I know you've been acting for a while. Yeah. Is there any one specific role you haven't gotten a chance to play that you'd really yes. like to? A role that the, the, that uh, Alexander. Payne is going to do just now, and it's already been cast. But I wanted that role. It's called. It's in a movie called Nebraska. It was the lead, but he gave it to a, a wonderful actor, Bruce Dern. I've worked with Bruce. We did Family Plot, Alfred Hitchcock's very last movie. We worked with him, and Bruce is so Bruce will be great in this, I'm sure. But I, I, I still may get in there. There's another part in there. I'm scrambling around trying to get. You know. We want to see you in there. Then. Yeah. yeah. What What was the attractment of that role? The role, I, the role I'm going. Oh, the, the, it was just an all-around great. You felt for the guy. You know, he was, he screwed up his life, but he still married his wife, and he's kind of a, 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 a has a problem with the booze, and is a farmer, and he's never really hit the jackpot or done anything memorable in his life. And you kind of pull for a guy, feel sorry for. Him. And then the other guy in there is just like his antagonist. So that'd be fun to play. You know, people, people love to uh, hate the. Uh, the heavy, you know. Oh, you're the guy that played the heavy guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. They, uh, yeah, you're the guy. You know, but uh, I, hey, listen, I've had so much fun doing this, this business. I've worked. Uh, I have to name some names because these guys are all gone, but they were giant. They were big stars. Burt Lancaster, George C. Scott, Charlie Bronson. Sounds like you've worked with the best of them. Yeah, Robert Ryan, and probably my all-time favorite, Lee Marvin. He was a character. Very oh. nice. So well, I'm sure our viewers look forward and the ladies, to seeing I'm not you. One left to let the ladies out there. Yeah, what about Je the ladies? Jessica Lang and uh, uh, oh, uh, Sissy Spacek. She, they're both all a fudge. That's a big. That's one of the biggest compliments you can give a, a lady. Like Cagney would say, "Oh boy, you're all a fudge." What does that mean? You're sweet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I thought it meant like you're, you're a sweet, mess. Sweet in personality and sweet in disposition, and you're just sweet. Well, it was all a fudge with you. Thank you. <laughs>